this class we will start a very special class of protocols which are called commit protocols. Now, these commit protocols are used in distributed databases and the background of this is that in a distributed database a transaction which is initiated at a site may have to be executed in a coordinated way in many different sites because it may involve the data stored in many different databases. right? So, the transaction will be initiated at one site, it will have sub transactions in many other sites and finally, when the sub transactions have completed, it is possible that some of them have completed successfully and some of them have not been able to complete successfully. If some of them have not been able to complete successfully, then the entire transaction has to be aborted and if all of them have su terminated successfully, then they will have to agree to commit the protocol. Okay. So, the commit protocol is a protocol which is initiated by the coordinator of the transaction with the aim to arrive at a consensus about whether or not to commit the protocol, okay, whether or not to commit the transaction. So, if the decision is to commit, then at all sites the transaction will be committed, if the decision is to abort, then it will be aborted at all sites. Okay. Now, obviously, there are many issues in between these lines, namely that when you actually are executing sub transactions, obviously it should not have side effects which you cannot abort. Right. So, you have to do the transaction execution in such a way that if necessary the transaction can be aborted before it is committed. Right. And we have to take care of situations like individual nodes going down, coming up later and things like that. And regardless of such failures, the commit or abort decision has to be unanimously agreed upon. Right. There are no malicious or Byzantine failures that we will consider here but we will certainly consider crash fault. So, let us first look at the, the model for uh, the, the model under which we will study this problem. So, just to reiterate transaction may access data at several sites, we are talking about distributed transactions. Each site has a local transaction manager which is responsible for maintaining a log for recovery purposes and participating in coordinating the concurrent execution of the transactions executing at that site. Okay. Now, transaction manager at a site does these two things. Okay. Now, this transaction manager is only participating in coordinating the concurrent execution of the transactions executing at that site itself. Now, this transaction manager will handle several transactions. All those transactions which have a sub transaction at this site will be locally handled by the transaction manager. So, this is the manager which will take care of concurrency problems in that particular site right? and also uh, creating logs and ensuring that proper recovery takes place when something goes down and so on. Right. Besides this, each site has a transaction coordinator. Now, coordinator is specific to a particular transaction. So, each transaction has a coordinator and the coordinator is responsible for starting the execution of transactions that or originate at that site. So, it is the initiator of the transaction distributing sub transactions at appropriate sites for execution and coordinating the termination of each transaction that originates at the site which may result in the transaction being committed at all sites or aborted at all sites. Right. For this step we will need the commit protocol. Okay. So, pictorially this is what it looks like that for a transaction, the transaction coordinator will actually create sub transactions in various different sites 
and all the sub transactions that are running at a particular site not not only for this transaction but for others as well they will be handled by the local transaction manager is the difference between these two clear yes no what's the doubt okay for a given transaction we have a transaction coordinator that is understood the role of the transaction coordinator is to initiate the transaction distribute the sub transactions make sure that whether they succeed or fail and finally commit or abort the transaction this is the role of the transaction coordinator for a transaction right now a transaction manager on the other hand is a site specific program it is the transaction manager at a site manages all the sub transactions that are running in that site and which sub transactions not only for one tr transaction sub transactions for many different transactions which are executing at that site is that clear scheduling those sub transactions maintaining the concurrency issues of those transactions etc is handled by the transaction manager so every site has a transaction manager every transaction has a transaction coordinator is it clear yes, yes. transaction coordinator mm -hmm. is uh, sub transaction concurrency it's going to parallelly distribute the sub transactions to different sites okay. and it will execute it may be sequential it may be parallel it's free to do it in any way okay typically it will try to do it in parallel because that makes sense why should you unless there is a data dependency uh, that is after this transaction uh, sub transaction execute some data is going to come back and then you will use that data to fire another sub transaction that can also happen right clear is this clear uh they are locally guaranteed they are guaranteed in each, each site but on the whole for the entire transaction that's what we have to do i mean they, for example atomicity you cannot guarantee across a set of distributed site right so those things we will see how they are handled these are the failure modes that we will um, handle the failure of a site this is possible loss of messages we will assume that loss of messages is handled by the network transmission control protocol such as tcp and ip so we will assume that our at our level messages will not be lost okay because they are handled by the lower layer but failure of a site can always take place we will consider failure of a communication link we will assume that these are handled by network protocols by routing messages via alternative link right then we will also consider network partition a network is said to be partitioned when it has been split into two or more subsystems that lack any connection between them okay that's called a network partition now in a in a subsystem obviously it can also consist of a single node or multiple nodes whatever it may be and network partitioning and site failures are typically indistinguishable why because for if the network is partitioned what does it mean it means some of the sites are on this side of the partition some of the sites are on the other side of the partition so the ones which are on this side of the partition they think that all the sites on the other side of the partition are actually down so it has no way to distinguish between the cases where there is a network partition that has taken place or all the sites on the other side are actually down 
you will see that. So, there is no way the sites can know that which of this is the case. Right? So, these are typically indistinguishable and we will see in our protocol how network partition is handled. Right? Because as you can see that the, the immediate problem will be that the coordinator will be on one side and uh, some of the sub transactions are executing on the other side. So, how do we actually arrive at a decision? Right. Now, what are commit protocols? Commit protocols are used to ensure atomicity across site. We want to ensure atomicity across site. A transaction which executes at multiple sites must either be committed at all the sites or aborted at all the sites and it is not acceptable to have a transaction committed at one site and aborted at another because that is going to be an inconsistent execution of the transaction. There are two commit protocols that we will look at. The first one is the two phase commit protocol which is widely used in practice and we will also look at the three phase commit protocol which is more complicated and more expensive but avoids some drawbacks of the two phase commit protocol. This protocol is not used very much in practice, but just because it the two phase commit protocol has a particular limitation and it makes interesting reading to see how three phase commit protocol gets around that limitation. That is why we will also touch upon the three phase commit protocol. We will assume fail stop model that is fail sites simply stop working and do not cause any other harm such as sending incorrect messages to other sites. So, there is no Byzantine failure, but it is not exactly a crash fault in the sense that a site which goes down can in the future come up again. Okay, so, sites can crash and they can also recover. So, it is not just plain crash and then you do not consider it any further that is not the case. It can recover also sometime later. Execution of the protocol is initiated by the coordinator after the last step of the transaction has been reached. Okay. So, we assume that all the sub transactions they have executed up to whatever part they can. So, they have either reached the end of their sub transaction or they have aborted somewhere in between and when they do not have any other computation to do, it is at that time that the commit protocol is initiated. Right? If it is initiated at any time before that, then the <coughs> sub transactions which are still in execution, they will ignore the protocol okay? and they will just not respond at that point of time. They will only respond after they have finished their part of the sub transaction. The transaction starts by the transaction coordinator distributing the sub transactions to the various sites. Right? Now, the coordinator as such will not know whether they have completed or not. So, it will initiate the commit protocol. Okay. Now, any site which is still executing the sub transaction will not respond to that before it finishes its sub transaction. Right? Finishes means either it terminates successfully or it terminates with failure. Okay? So, the commit protocol actually starts execution among the sites after the sites have completed their sub transactions for that transaction. It does not know. So, it starts the commit protocol and the sites will not respond until they have they are done with their part. Yeah, so that that is what we assume. There is no difference between the two. Assuming that you start after the last step has been executed and saying that the sites will just hold back on the messages sent by the protocol until they have finished, it just comes to the same thing. Right? See, 
this is what the protocol assumes. Now the first question that you will ask me if I make this statement is how will the transaction coordinator know that about this thing. If it knew about what the different sites have done, then it can immediately take a decision whether to commit or abort, right. So then uh, the whole point is it does not know. So it will start the commit protocol. Yes, but, but the point of this what this says is that the transaction commit protocol will not continue until the sub transactions are finished. So even if it is initiated, it is it is not going to execute until the sub transactions have finished. The protocol involves all the local sites at which the transaction executed, right? obviously, because otherwise you cannot leave out a sub transaction. Let T be the transaction initiated at site SI and let the transaction coordinator at SI be CI. Okay? Now, let us look at the two phase commit protocol. So, just as the name suggests, there are two phases in this protocol. Phase 1 is to obtain a decision and then we will see phase 2 where the decision will be recorded. Okay? So, these are two phases. Let us look at phase 1. In phase 1, the coordinator of the transaction asks all participants to prepare to commit transaction CI. So, how does it do that? So, the CI is the coordinator for the transaction. It adds the record prepare T to the log and forces log to stable storage. Now, you have to understand what is happening here. For every transaction, a database maintains a transaction log. Okay? Whatever you are doing is first written into the log and when we say that the log is forced into stable storage, it means that the log is backed up in a, in a storage which is not going to crash. Do you get it? Even if the machine goes down, it, that information is saved. So, when it recovers, it can recover that information. Okay. So, note that we are adding the record prepared T to the log and forcing the log to stable storage. Okay. So, what does this mean? That when this step is completed, there is a prepared T message in the log in the stable storage. Then after that it is after that is ensured, the coordinator sends a prepared T message to all sites at which T executed. Okay? It sends a prepared T message to all sites at which T executed. Remember that in this protocol we are going to handle crash failure or, or fail stop fault. So at any point of time, any site can go down. Right. So, between any of these steps, this site can go down and we have to way have a way of recovering from that and arriving at a consistent decision about the fate of the, of the transaction. Writing the log into stable storage. Okay, what is the log? The log is where you for when you do a transaction, you do not execute the transaction fully on the actual database because you when you are working on the database, there are many concurrent transactions accessing the database. right? So, everything that you do on the database is actually done on a log. right? After the log, it is there on the log, then the final outcome is copied back into the database. 
right? The update is done in an atomic way. The transaction execution will take place on the log. Everything will be logged and then it is going to finally, when it is committing it, then it will write from the log into the actual database. Now, it may be the case that you have written it in the, into the log, but before you force it into stable storage, then the site fails. That is possible. Then when you recover, you will see that in the log there is no prepared key because the log at the point of failure was not saved. So, the prepared key message never got into the stable storage. So, all these conditions we will examine hmm. to make sure that under no circumstances do we have a incorrect decision about the transaction, right. Now, what I was saying is that when the when a transaction executes, whatever operations are done, they are all logged, right. The log is used for recovery purposes. If there is any failure somewhere, then you can use the log to recover, right. Now, upon receiving the message, the transaction manager at site determines if it can commit the transaction. Now, what it checks is it checks its local sub transaction and sees whether everything is all right about that sub transaction. If not, then locally that transaction cannot be committed. Now, if any at any site the transaction cannot be committed, then globally it cannot be committed because if any sub transaction cannot be committed successfully, then the whole transaction fails. So, we have to abort the whole transaction. Suppose you wanted to execute something and you could not execute that. So, you have failed there. So, that means that that transaction cannot be committed, right. You can have exceptions, right. You are trying to draw money from an account and then the, the you see that that account does not have some so much amount of money. So, that is going to throw an ex exception and that then that part of the transaction which was trying to withdraw money from that account is failing. Right. So, then that site will say that this sub transaction cannot be committed, okay. When it cannot be committed, then the local transaction manager will add a record no t to the log, okay. T is the ID of the transaction, we will add no t to the log and send about t message to CI, okay. Now, when I am saying that adds a noti record to the log, I am also between the lines saying that and the log is forced into stable storage, right. And then it sends an about t message to CI, to the coordinator, okay. On the other hand, if the transaction can be committed locally, that is the local sub transaction executed successfully, then the transaction manager will add the record ready t to the log and force all records for t to stable storage, okay. Now, what does this mean? All records for t to stable storage means see that local sub transaction executed its steps on the log that is copied into the stable storage, but still we are not modifying the database because we do not know yet whether the whole transaction will commit or not, right. So, it is all on the log, it is executed on the log and it forces all records to the table stable storage at this point of time and sends a ready t message to CI indicating that this site is ready to commit t, okay. Is that, is this part clear, right. Now, uh, did you understand what I said, what I meant by saying that a transaction, 
executed on the log see it means that you are reading from the database it is like you know doing a set of operations on a register in a computer architecture yes only those records which are relevant to yes. t it copies those and does everything locally on that set of accounts without actually updating the actual account right so it's like the like a dirty page of a cache it's not written back yet right now let's look at phase 2 of the protocol so in phase 2 t can be committed if this should be if please this is not off it's if okay t can be committed if ci received a ready t message from all the participating sites otherwise t must be aborted so this is the decision that the coordinator will have to take that if it gets a ready t message from all the participating sites then it will decide to commit otherwise it will decide to abort remember that that this all sites including includes the site of the coordinator hmm. it includes that of the coordinator now when the decision is to commit or abort the coordinator adds a decision record commit t or abort t to the log and forces the record onto stable storage right once the record is in the stable storage it is irrevocable so once the co coordinator has written its decision about t on the stable storage the state of the the fate of the transaction is sealed at that point of time okay but the other sites do not yet know about the decision so in the next step the coordinator sends a message to each participa participant or the participating site informing it of the decision commit or abort okay. and participants take appropriate action locally now what is that appro ap appropriate action if the decision is abort they simply remove those records from the log and if the decision is to commit then the log is now copied into the database right okay and they, that operation is again atomic that copying from the log to the database is atomic and there are separate ways by which a system locally guarantees that that is atomic and as well resilient to crashes right not necessarily so and you execute some other sub transactions initiated by someone else you may not be able to commit that no but see if there is a data dependency between these between the sub transactions of two different transactions then your traditional uh, concurrency problems will appear which you may have studied in a database course right there at the same site you have two sub transactions from two different transactions executing locally and one of them reads the data written by the other right now to support concurrency you have allowed this sub transaction to read the data uh, originating out of the other sub transaction even before that sub transaction is committed right that that value propagates through the log right in that case as you may have studied in databases that when one of them aborts it can lead to a cascading rollback of other uh, transactions right now if you want to prevent cascading rollback then you will have to sacrifice concurrency then you cannot allow them to execute in that order you will have to properly serialize them and then execute
if it gets ready t from everyone then this is going to send out it is going to record that the decision is commit right and after recording that decision it will send out a commit message commit t message to all the sites right on the other hand if any of these sites sent a abort message abort t message would we call it abort t or no t just just no t if any of them sent a no t message then this one will decide to abort the transaction and in that case instead of sending a commit t it will send a abort t to all the sites right this is the two phase commit protocol this is the phase 1 in which this takes place and this is the phase 2 in which the decision is recorded and communicated to all the nodes the log is not deleted from the stable storage okay when you get a abort message from the log you delete the records corresponding to t so corresponding to t you had certain okay just let me let me give you an idea about the log suppose in a this thing you you have two records ra and rb right so suppose you you are what you want to do in the transaction is ra right suppose this is what you want to do now in your database you have a location for ra 
you have a location for RB, right? So what do you do in the log? What you do is you lock RA, okay? Then read RA and where do you put it? You put it in some temporary location T1, okay? You put it in T1. Then what do you do? You do T1 is T1 minus 100, okay? Then you lock RB. All right, and then what do you do? You do T two R B. Then you do T two is T two plus hundred. Then you write T one into R A. Write T two into R B. This is the kind of thing that is that will be there in the log. Okay. Now see we are not actually doing anything here. Uh, we are not doing anything on the actual database. So suppose R A is 500, R B is 200, right? So what is happening here? Here T1 is getting 500, then T1 is becoming 400, right? So basically at this point T1 value is 400, it is noted. Then you lock RB, then you read this 200 plus 100, 300, okay? Sorry, this will be 400, right? T1 will be 400, T2 will be 300, and then this one it will not do at this point of time. Now, if the transaction is aborted, then you just remove this thing from the log. So that is completely forgetting about uh, this particular thing. Uh, do you get me? Uh, on the other hand, if you commit this, then you will have to complete this and write it back into that. All right? And if at any point of time here this one fails, then the local log based recovery mechanism is going to read this log and then redo the transaction on the actual account, right? So that I am not going into the complete log based recovery thing, that is a complete database issue. Our main goal here is to make sure that the decision to commit or abort is agreed upon by all the sites, okay? Right? Now, let us see what happens when we have fault. Handling of failures. So, first of all, let us look at site failure. Now, when site SI recovers, it examines its log to determine the fate of transactions active at the time of the failure. Now, this is a case where a site SI somewhere in between went down, now it has come up again, it has recovered. What is it going to do? It will check its log. If the log contains a commit T record, that means that the transaction coordinator had decided to commit the record, commit the transaction, right? So it must commit the tra local transaction also. So it executes redo t. What is redo t? It looks at its log and redoes the part of the transaction that it was supposed to do, right? And from the log it copies it into the database. Clear? If it finds that the log contains an abort T record, 
So, then it knows that the coordinator decided to abort the transaction. So, it will execute undo t right. Now, undo t in very simple terms is that whatever was there in the log corresponding to t it is going to get rid of that right. But indirectly it can lead to cascading rollback which I was just now mentioning that because there might be other transactions which have read the data that it had produced. So, those transactions will now also have to be undone. So, undo t is the process of doing that. Suppose log contains a ready t record, but it does not contain a commit t or abort t, then it cannot take a decision about the fate of the transaction, because even though it was ready to commit the, the, the transaction, it may be the case that some other site had uh, sent a no t to the coordinator and the decision of the coordinator is not recorded in the log of SI. So, it has to consult the coordinator to determine the fate of t ok. Now, it, it asks uh, CI that what is the fate of t and CI informs whether it committed or aborted. If CI informs that t was committed, then it must redo t. If CI said that t was aborted, then it was undo t. Yes. No. No, no, it does not send commit t, it sends uh, I think you have see prepare t is the message sent by the coordinator and it says either ready t or no t. Commit t is the one which the coordinator sends communicating the decision. So, if that decision is there in the log, then everybody else had actually agreed to commit and that is why the coordinator decided to commit. So, at that point of time the transaction fate is sealed. So, it is commit. Coordinator writes commit in its log. Coordinator writes commits in its log. Huh. So, that we will take up in the co coordinator failure. We are looking at site failure here. Then the co if the coordinator fails at this point of time, when the coordinator recovers, it will have certain activities to do. Right. That is what we will see uh, when we look at coordinator failure. Now is the site failure part all right? If in the site failures, if the log contains no control record concerning t concerning t, then what can we say? Typo here. The log contains no control records concerning T, implies that SK failed before responding to the prepared T message from CI, right? Because it does not even have a prepared T message in its log. Yes. So, if CI did not get any response from SK, it could not have committed the transaction, right? It could not have committed the transaction. Now, there are two possibilities. One is it is still waiting or it has already aborted. In any case, S k in this protocol, it aborts it, it aborts the transaction. So, what it does is, since the failure of S k precludes the sending of such a response, C i must abort, must have aborted T. Even if it is waiting at this point of time, we will just treat this as an abort. So, S k executes undo T. It may have done something, but before committing it has failed. Uh, 
ट्रांजेक्शन एक्सिक्यूशन टेकन प्लेस हियर वट एवर यू डन ऑन द लग दैट हेज टेकन प्लेस हियर right before you came to the commit protocol right so it has done something on the log but that right? was committed on the but stable uh, so no this was committed this was in this is in the stable log it's in the log in stable storage whatever act things that it has done this is the steps of the actual transaction the database operations that it has done on the log that is already there in stable storage then it got the prepared message from the coordinator and failed here before it could respond with a ready t or no t this is where it failed okay so therefore its log does not have any ready t or no t message but that doesn't mean that it the log doesn't have any records on t these are the records on on the execution of t are you getting what i'm saying sir putting the system into the stable storage mm -hmm. is done explicitly in this protocol no no no, no 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 we are doing it before sending to send to priority and then force it then send to priority no 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 do what you are doing is these records this no t ready t are being forced into the log before you send out the messages so when this does not crash it first writes ready t on its log and then sends out the ready t message but rest of the transaction is already forced yes yes no, oh, not on the database on the log on the log and the stable log storage. yes stable storage prepared right? t is in the stable storage of ci the other nodes when they get a prepared t they decide whether or not they can commit and accordingly write a ready t or no t in their record and then communicate the message to the coordinator no no it's not atomic it it simply when it gets the prepared t message it takes a decision locally and records that decision before responding to the coordinator uh, okay now Be between getting the prepared t and before it is able to record its local decision it can fail right it can also fail after it has recorded its decision but not yet sent it back to the coordinator there also it can it may have failed do you, do you get it i think uh, because we have run out of time so we will uh, look up the the issue of coordinator failure which is more interesting in the next class and then uh, just go do, uh, go through an outline of the three phase commit protocol